Welcome, gathering family, back to our home at the Vista, and welcome to everyone watching online. It's 2023, y'all. We made it. Come on. Give God praise. You made it. It's a time of the year where I know we're all kind of thinking like the year ahead and resolutions, right? So, so finish, this, finish this sentence. This year, I will. Go ahead and put it up there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. Someone didn't get their coffee this morning. This year, I will. You what? Oh, you love Jesus. Okay. Find his will. See, y- y'all, are, y'all are like, I, if I asked you the same question at the gym, I wonder what you'd say. <laughs> y'all are getting awfully religious today. But like, well, you know, what's, what's, what, what, what's this year I will, you know, who's going who's gonna to lose weight? No? Because that always works, right? What else? Maybe, you're going to succeed? Nice. Focus. That's a good one. Whew. The great weapon of mass distraction. We got to focus. What's that? What's yours, Tabby? Read 52 books? Dang, girl, you go. Yeah, this is a time of year. You, you ever wondered how long a New Year's resolution lasts? I did, and I looked it up. According to the Brain Research Institute, the average, well, most of us, 64% of us, will break our New Year's resolution within 30 days. Now, 46% of you and I will wait six months before we break our resolution. And here's the crazy part. Only 14% of those people over the age of 50 will achieve their resolution compared to 39% of people in their 20s. We actually get worse with age. Here's what I'm trying to, to, to point out is that, friends, we're, we're, we're prone to settle. We have a proclivity to, to a, a bent towards settling. It's just kind of how we're wired if we don't interact with that, that unintentional desire to settle. And you know what the funny thing is? The world will help you settle. Think about it. When I was young and you signed up for a gym membership, you had to commit to 12 months. Now, you can cancel that bad boy two weeks into January. No cancellation fee, right? No, no big contract. I mean, we, we settle in, in so many areas. The world helps us. Our kids, we've got a coach here. Everyone gets a trophy. We don't incentivize winning because everyone's a winner. So long as you try. Well, you know what? How do you know what it feels like to win if you've never lost? Right? And, and, then, and, and sports. I'll, I'll, I'll do you another one. How about the sports? Every time someone gets the first down, they got to get up and, woohoo! I made it seven feet. Right? Or, 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 or they pick off a pass, and what do they do? They run to the camera, and they do their, woohoo, little dance. How about you just get your butt back to the huddle, and let's play ball? I mean, when's the last time? You know, your, your FedEx driver successfully delivered a package to you and you see him in the ring camera. <laughs> What's wrong with this world? We settle. Or here's, here's one. Here's one. If you have a drug addiction, I know that's a real thing and I'm not making light of that. Addiction's a real thing. I'm just saying, why is it that in New York, if you have addiction, you can go to one of these supervised injection sites? Well, they'll let you inject right there and provide a needle for you. Yeah, it's a real thing. We settle. We settle for so much less than what God has called us to. This is week one of the series I'm calling Refuse to Settle. And those of you who've been with me for a while, you're probably tired of hearing it. But every, every preacher has a message. And that is a message that God has placed on my life to share with you. And that is refuse to settle. Refuse to settle. But, but why? We have to ask the question why. Why is it that we settle? I think, I think the answer for a lot of us, if we're honest, if we can be real today, is that we've experienced letdowns. We've experienced letdowns. And the cumulative effect of letdown after letdown, maybe it was one really big letdown, or for most of us it's probably a, a bunch of little letdowns, and the cumulative effect has caused us to settle for less 
than that which we were called. Maybe it's health. Maybe you had a big health issue and that was a big letdown. Maybe your letdown was with humanity. Maybe someone you loved let you down. Or maybe for somebody, your letdown was heaven. God didn't show up the way you thought he was going to show up. He didn't show up in the timing in which you thought he was going to show up. Maybe you're still waiting. You still feel let down. Who would be honest enough to say in the eight days of 2023, you've already experienced a letdown? Yeah. That's the reality of the world in which we live. And, and the thing about letdowns is they can distract us. They can define us if we allow them. And they can even derail us. But I got a question. What if, what if God sent, sent these letdowns, not to, in fact, let us down, but rather to lift us up? What if, what if your letdown wasn't sent to, I don't know, distract you, but rather extract you from a life of complacency? What if your, your letdown wasn't sent to define you, but to align you with the purpose? What if, what if your, your letdown wasn't sent to derail you, but, but to avail you to the call that God placed on your life, a call that has been sleepy and dormant for far too long? Friends, if you're, if you're dealing with letdowns, <laughs> I, I, and I'm, talking, I'm not talking about self-induced letdowns. I'm talking about a God-induced letdown, a, a letdown that you didn't, you didn't ask for, and you didn't do anything wrong, and yet it still found you. If you're dealing with a letdown, friends, I got good news for you. I got good news because God put this on my heart and told me to tell you, there's life in your letdown. There is life giving purpose and a life giving plan within that letdown to do something that could not otherwise have been done. I know it's crazy. I know you didn't ask for it. I know you don't even really want it. But God told me to tell you there's life in your letdown. Luke chapter 5. Let's get into God's word. Then. Luke chapter 5. We're going to see a guy named Simon who just had this massive letdown. And then Jesus shows up on the scene to remind Simon that there's actually life in his letdown. Luke chapter 5 verse 1. One day Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. Now Gennesaret... Is, is actually is, um, is the Sea of Galilee and the Sea of Tiberias and the Sea of Chinnereth in the Old Testament. I know that's kind of complicated, but it's all the same place. It's a freshwater lake, the largest lake in Israel, 13 miles long, 7 miles wide. It's the same. So when you hear Gennesaret, Sea of Galilee, Sea of Tiberias, Sea of Chinnereth, same thing. So Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the boat belonging to Simon. Now, here again, just so we understand, Simon, Peter, and Cephas, they're the same person. There's Hebrew name, uh, Aramaic name, and Greek name. So same person, Simon, Peter, Cephas, same dude. Uh, so he gets into the boat belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat, other, and that was James and John, to, to come and to help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, 
and follow him. Lord God, I thank you for those puzzling yet life-giving letdowns that do something in us. I pray that we are not victims. I pray that we begin to see things the way you want us to see them. See them for what they are. There's life in our letdowns. Help us see that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's look at this letdown, this, this God-induced letdown. Jesus sh- shows up and he asks him to let down the nets. Let's, let's look at, let's examine this. First of all, when did it occur? It occurred after a long, arduous, non-stop night of fishing. A failed fishing trip because all he caught was some little indigestion by the three Red Bulls and the two Slim Jims. He helped keep him awake all night. He didn't catch nothing else. And, it's, and you have to look. The student of the Bible examines, okay, ask good questions. We ask good questions. When? When did this happen? It happened after a long, nonstop night of failure. Hmm. Point number one, your letdown is sent to produce your slowdown. Could it be that you are moving a little too fast? You and I, we move at the speed of life, but that's really not life-giving, is it? And so God sends this letdown to slow us down. And in fact, anybody got 360, Life 360? Parents, if you got teenagers, you better get it. It's the best thing that God ever invented. You can watch those little devils. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, but I, I, did, I did go ahead. I, I caught Levi the other, the other night. Look at this. That's Levi. Uh-huh. Coming home. Oh, you didn't know I was going to put that up, did you, Levi? Yeah, huh? I see you back there. That big mullet. I see you. Okay. 79 miles per hour. Rolling in his little Mustang. It's only a four-cylinder, so don't worry. It, but it is turbo. But I wonder if, like, if, 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 if God took a screenshot of our life, like, what would the speed of your life read? What would it be? I wonder if some of us are maybe speeding a little bit. You hear me say this, one of my favorite quotes by Adrian Rogers, if Satan can't make you bad, He'll make you busy. And I think a lot of us, man, we ain't bad. We're just busy. We're just busy people. And so God sends the weight of a letdown, W-E-I-G-H-T, right, weight of the letdown. You didn't think I could spell it, did you? And you come up here and see how easy this is. But he sends the weight of a letdown to help teach us to wait, W-A-I-T. Right? Weight. Since the weight, the heaviness. He felt the heaviness of failure. And what, what does it say? Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. And, and I think that, 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 that's, that sounds familiar to a lot of us. God, I've, I've prayed. I've fasted. I cried out to you, God, and nothing. Can anybody relate to that? Yeah, you can understand a night of failure. But here's the thing. You say, God, why would you allow this to occur? Here's what God spoke to me. We catch more when we've caught less. Let that sink in. We catch more from what's important, from who's important, when we've caught less from this world. Man, I've been in, I've been in church many years straight, well, not even counting the days of, of, of a private 501c3 that I started, not even counting that, just church, church ministry for 16 years. And it was in a period of eight months that I heard the most from God that I've ever heard. And it was a period when I wasn't Pastor John anymore. I didn't have a title. I, was, I went through a painful church transition and everything was stripped away. And it was just me and my real self before God, sitting on my back porch, no title, No one cared. No one was calling me for advice. It was then that I heard God speak so clearly, so vividly, and and such preparation for the season, for this church, for this planting, like that had to happen, and I had to receive. I had to hear in the midst of pain, in the midst of 
me getting over myself and realizing that I'm not the victim. Like I had to hear, and I did, and I heard more clearly, friends, than I've ever heard. Because we catch more when we've caught less. I was in a letdown season, and God showed me in that letdown season, son, there's life in your letdown. So when did it happen? It happened after a night of failure to slow Peter down. And then I want to ask, where did it happen? Where did the letdown happen? Okay, let's go back to God's word and find out. Verse 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Did you get that? Where did it occur? It occurred in deep waters. Here, here, here's what I'm trying to tell you from God's word. Is that there's a work that God wants to do in your life and it requires a letdown. But not just any old letdown. A letdown in deep water. God's saying, don't settle, don't settle, don't settle. He's speaking that to you. He's speaking that to you through, through his servant today. He's speaking, don't settle. Cast your nets on deeper water. Receive that today. Cast your nets. Someone's, we're, we're, cast, we're used to casting our nets on shallow water, and God's saying, cast your nets on deeper water. Bring that pool out. I'm going to illustrate this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I think a lot of us... A lot of us, we settle for the kiddie pool. We're just floating around in the, in the kiddie pool, thinking we're all that. And, and, if, and, and if you notice, there's a progression. Oh, I'm going to preach the word of God from the kiddie pool today. That's right. I'm, there's a progression. Jesus got in the boat, and he said, push out a little. Right? He didn't say go to the deep right away. He said, push out a little. Just a little bit. Because he understands we are works in progress. We, we, we receive things over time. We're incremental in nature, right? And so he says, push out a little bit. And then he teaches the word of God. And then he says, all right, let's go out to the deep. I think a lot of us, we settle for the kiddie pool. Mm-hmm, oh, it's so nice just floating in the kiddie pool with our little floaties. You know what else floats in the kiddie pool? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying... I want to keep it real. I have four teenagers and we had a pool. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't spend much time in the shallow end. But, but here, here, here's why, here, I think here's why, this is, this, is, this is a lot of us, literally. I mean, I know we're laughing, but like a lot of us are right now in the kiddie pool. And, and, and here's the thing about settling. You never really know you're settling. You always think I'm talking to your husband, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you, hearing, you hearing this, baby? You're in the, you're in the kiddie pool. And, and he's thinking the same thing about you, okay? And, and so here we are in the kiddie pool. And why do we settle for the kiddie pool? Well, because we hear messages about, like, salvation. And we think, okay, anybody, any, anytime you hear someone talk about sal- soteriology, all right, we're going we're gonna to go deep in the kiddie pool. Soteriology is a doctrine of salvation. I want to teach you a little bit more about salvation because people always talk about past tense. You know, I was saved. And I want to teach you there's, biblically speaking, there's three tenses. I know you can't take me seriously with these things. <laughs> Three, three tenses to salvation, right? Go ahead and put it up there. Three tenses. All right, so we got past, present, and future tense. So here's, here's what everyone knows, this part, the past tense. I was saved, right? Like I was saved from the penalty of sin. Say was saved. Was saved. I was saved, or I, I've, I've, if you want to, I've been saved from the uh, penalty of sin. That's, that's what we call justification because what Jesus did on the cross, he died for you and me and, and his righteousness was imputed to us. Like, a, like a, a, a judge hits the gavel and says, you're declared righteous because of Jesus. Amen, amen is right. Someone, someone felt the weight of that, of what he did and so we call that justification. You and I have been justified. Say justified. How do you remember justified? Just as if I'd never sinned. Mm -hmm. Justified. Now you'll remember, what does it mean, justified? It's just as if I'd never sinned. Never sinned because of what Jesus did on the cross for me. I'm justified. That's justification. That's the part most people know. And most people stop there. I've heard a preacher say, our job is to make it to heaven and take people with us. That's part of it, right? But, but, But there's a bigger picture. Biblically speaking, okay? So justification, 
That's where most people stop, which is why we live the same old way, never change, still have the same sins, same struggles, ain't no different because we settle for justification. The second tense of salvation is I am being saved. Former, I have been saved from the penalty of sin. Now we're present. I am being saved from the power of sin. That's our part. Now we use, utilize and leverage the Holy Spirit, of course, to do so. But that's where we walk it out. That's where we leave the kiddie pool where we got saved. Woohoo, I got saved. That's awesome. Praise God. Nothing can separate you from, no one can snatch. We believe in eternal security. That's, a, that's an amazing thing. But now you got to go walk it out. Now you got to go live it out. That's sanctification. Say sanctification. Sanctification means being set apart from sin. That happens, friends, in deep water. And then there's future tense. So we got, I have been saved, past tense, from the penalty of sin. I am being saved from the power of sin, that's present. And future, I will be saved from the presence of sin because we will get our glorified bodies. We will be in heaven. There will be no more sin. You won't walk with a limp anymore. Praise God. That's glorification. So we got justification, we got sanctification, and we got glorification. Right now, what are we working on? Sanctification. That, my friends, requires deep waters. But why does no one go to the deep? Because we're scared. Because in the deep waters, you can't see the bottom. And so what do we do? Oh, I'm kind of fearful. We have to cast before you catch. Mm-hmm. You, have to, you have to see it. You have, to, or you have to submit it before you see it. Submit before you see. That's exactly what Peter did right here. Verse, verse 5, Simon answered, Master, we haven't, we, we, we've worked hard all night and, and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Man, I want to raise up a church of because I say so faith. I'm not talking about me say so. I'm talking about him saying so. Man, I don't understand it. I can't see it. And, and quite frankly, I'm frustrated as can be, God. But because you say so, I'm going to cast my nets on deep water. Like, do we need, do we need an explanation? Do we need sight? Or can we just submit before you see it? God's calling us to let down. Let down, let down, let down, let down, let down our pride. Maybe someone needs to go to counseling. Just let down your pride. Maybe, maybe it's a let down those walls and begin to, to love again. I think for a lot of us, it's letting down that and relinquishing that desire to control. To control. And just believe that it's going to be okay. Here's a picture of what it looks like when you control. The tighter you grip, the more damage that you do. I think for a lot of us, we need to let down our desire and habit of worry. A lot of us, we worry. My man Lawrence said, worry is interest paid on trouble that hasn't happened. That's a good one. Worry is interest paid on trouble that hadn't even happened. We got to let down our worry. Friends, I- I'm so proud of this church. I'm so proud of you because we-, we did some deep sea fishing, didn't we, this past week. Oh, uh, they brought up my mic stand today, and-, and-, and there was grass all over everything from the park. Yeah, I, got- I-, I went to the car wash yesterday. Man, I got grass everywhere from the park. It's- it was awesome. We did some deep sea fishing. Last year, we did some fishing. This year, we went... We went on some deeper waters. What do I mean? Last year, we had little space on the third baseline, right? And then I said, you know, I feel like God's calling us to deeper waters. Now, I might have looked like an idiot. It could have rained the whole time. 17 people could have showed up, and y'all were like, he's crazy. But, man, I'm telling you, I had to cast before I could see it, right? And, and I'm so proud. I'm so, so proud of what God did through each one of you. Here, over four days, we had three days for Christmas, one day for worship night. Over those four days, we had 7,100 people, just over that. Praise God. <laughs> Woo! 
But even, but even better than that, even more important than that in my mind is the decisions. We had, as best as we could tell, it was dark and we had our elders and people looking, but as best as we could tell, we had just over 200 decisions for Jesus Christ. And give God praise for that. And check it out. Here's a recap. You would use us to change a city one light at a time. Let us shine brightly like you did, Jesus. Oh. And, and I just got to give a shout out to Pastor Michael and our whole ops team. They rocked it, man. They, and, and, and all of you who made it happen, they, so cool. Wow. Man, but, but as much as uh, kind of almost makes me tear up, man, because I, I, you see the, the life transformation, but, but I got to keep it real. Uh, if I'm honest, I don't think I, I, I cast deep enough. Here, here's why. We ran out of, we had, we, had to, we had to get more bounces, night two, and thank God we did because night two was crazy. There was twice as many people there night two if you weren't there. And, and, and we had to get another petting zoo. We had to uh, get cotton and more cotton candy machines. We ran out of kids' packs. God's like saying, John, I know you thought you cast on deep water, but you ain't seen nothing yet. You better prepare for revival in your city. And, and as crazy as it is, he's going to let us facilitate that and be a big part of it. I don't know how, how that works out in God's economy, but he's trusting us to do something so special. Thank you for stepping up and being a huge part of it. Was there letdowns? Yes. Were there some things we did wrong? Yeah. Did we run out of some stuff? Yep. But there was life in that letdown. Amen. Amen. So we know when the letdown happened, okay, after a long night of fishing to slow uh, Peter down. Then we know where it happened in, in, in deep waters to, to help him get out of the kiddie pool. And lastly, we ask, why? Why did it happen? And I think the answer is in verse, verse 8. God wants to expose something because here, here this great miraculous catch happens, right? And you think, Peter, he'd just be like his response, he'd be elated. But listen to how he responds. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. What? Friends, you want to know what settling looks like? That's it. Go away from me, Jesus. It's called giving Jesus the stiff arm. And Peter's not the only one that's done that. We do that at times. Maybe not in the exact same way. Maybe not the exact same language. Maybe we, 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 we sanitize it a little bit. I'm not sure if God could use me with all my past and my mistakes. And, right? However we sugarcoat it. And, and, and we give God the stiff arm. And we settle. Do we make it to heaven? Yes. Do we take people with us? Yes. But... Do we settle for less than what God called us to and to be? Absolutely. And that's the part that pains my spirit. And under this roof, under this house, under this church, under the umbrella, I refuse as much as God has given me the power to do so, to allow that to happen to people I love. We've got to refuse to settle. And here's, here's where the battle's lost, right here. Right here, right here, right here. The battle of the mind. Because... Peter has experienced a life of, of, of letdowns. And so our, experience, our experiences inform our beliefs. Our beliefs then inform our decisions. Our decisions then inform our results. And we settle for so much less. Get away from me, Jesus. You can't use me. I'm a sinful man. She's like, what? It's in here. I want to bring Gavin out. I want to help, Gavin's going to help me illustrate this. Come on up, Gav. So I want to illustrate what happens and how we lose it from here. So God whispers a song to everyone. What, what did he whisper to Peter? Well, we don't know exactly what Simon Peter's song was, but we know part of it. 
Because this wasn't the first time Jesus met Peter. You know that? If you go back to John chapter 1, verse 42, Andrew brought Peter, his brother, to meet Jesus probably months earlier. And you know what Jesus said the first time he met Simon? Here's what he said. John 1, 42. He said, you, Simon, will be called Cephas. What is Cephas? Cephas is Aramaic, meaning rock. What's the Greek equi- equivalent? Petros or Peter. Peter, Cephas, means rock. What, was, what, was he, what song was he whispering? He was whispering, listen, I'm going to help build this church on you, Peter. And, and I need you to, to, to not cease to believe. You're going you're gonna to doubt. You're going to question. You're going to deny me three times. You're going to have some issues like the rest of us. Us meaning us, not Jesus. He's perfect. But like the rest of us. But I need you to believe. I need you to not ever stop believing. I think that was his, was his song. Don't stop, Peter. Don't stop believing when, when you face a letdown. And I think his song sounded a little bit like, like this. Go ahead and play it. Nice, nice, nice. I mean, a little pitchy, but no, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm totally joking. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, was really good. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. God speaks a song to you. He spoke a song to Peter. And, and we get it. Some, we get it in here. But here's where it doesn't always translate. Sometimes it lives in here and it dies along the way to our hands, because what came out of Peter's hands? Get away from me! You're, you're, first time you met him, you're, I'm a whisper song, you're, you're, you're a rock. Man, don't you stop believing. Get away from me! What, what happened? See, sometimes when God whispers a song to you and I, it dies somewhere along the way. Tabby, what's your song? What's a song? It doesn't have to be a Christian song. What's, what's a song? that you like. Beautiful Crazy. You don't know that one, do you? We didn't have this planned, y'all. That's that's no joke. Give me my word before Jesus. Well, that couldn't have gone any better. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But but what if, that's cool that you knew that song. I'm still like, whoa, that's, and, and, and it's pretty cool to be able to play by ear like that. Some of us musicians who can't really play as well by ear, you're like, oh, God, really? Why didn't I get that gift? But what if, what if the beautiful, crazy song just stayed in here? Because for you to do what you did with your little magic fingers, it had to take a journey from here to there, right? But what if it never did? What if that... Beautiful, crazy, just lived up here. And, 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 and I'm like, hey, I got a great song for you. You want to hear it? That's it. That's what happens to each one of us, if we're honest. Here's what God wanted me to tell you. Live, live on the outside. What God spoke on the inside. You want to refuse to settle? We got to begin to live on the outside, let it come through your fingertips. Let it come through your mouth. Let it come through, through who you are as a person. Live on the outside what God spoke to you on the inside. Don't let it die along the way. Most of us, we, we're, we're content with, oh, thanks, God, you gave me a good message. You spoke a good word to me. Oh, Pastor John, you spoke a good word through Pastor John. That's awesome. Yay, God. And then we go out and we live the same old way. And God's saying, live on the outside what I spoke to you on the inside. I loved you. I care for you. I got a plan for you. Don't you settle for less than, than who I ordained you. I don't care what the world has made you. I don't care what happened growing up. And I'm not minimizing the damage of some of those things that can happen. But like, 
you are not the sum total of your mistakes. Those letdowns can be redeemed for the purpose and the plan of God. But it's got a trans it's got a transition from here to here. Play that song again, Gavin. Do it again, do it again. They need to hear that. Let it live. Sing that song. What a great song. Beautiful, crazy. <laughs> That's what it means to be a follower of Christ. It's beautiful. But it's crazy, Robert, that you would spend so much time as the elder chair being out there, going through all that pain. You came out here to retire. God said, ha ha, you ain't going to retire. This is going to be the best part of your life if you avail yourself to it. <laughs> and thank you to your sweet wife who doesn't get to see you as much as she would have if you played it safe. But see, that's beautiful crazy. It's beautiful, but warning, it's crazy. It's going to take the sum of you. It's going to take all of you. If you really want to lay it on the line, if you really want to live the life God's called you to live, it's going to take all of you. It's beautiful, but it's crazy. And here's the thing I want to tell you, that Peter, he was, uh, he was about to, this story was about to be a tragedy. This story was about to end like a train wreck. Peter's letdown was about to become his life sentence. Thank God, literally, thank God that Jesus stepped in and saved the day. He said, don't be afraid, Peter. From now on, you will fish for people. Friends, the story ain't, ain't about fish. It ain't about provision. It's about filling Peter's heart with, 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 with faith and realizing and, re, and, and realigning him to his destiny. Look, you, you're a good fisherman. You're good at it. And I know it brings you great pride and great joy, but like there's something greater I need you to fish for. I'm going to do something bigger than you'll ever know through you. And I just wonder how many letdowns are living as tragedies waiting to become testimonies. I think that's described someone in here today, someone watching online. You're let down. It's become a tragedy. And God says it was never meant to be a tragedy. It was meant to be a testimony. But we got to get past. We got to get through it. And to do that, we got to realize that God's doing something good. It's a beautiful crazy. It's crazy. But we got to see the beauty in it. And you know what? Sometimes we need a little help, don't we? We need someone in our life that can be Jesus to us. Jesus with skin on, right? Jesus, t t t just like Peter needed Jesus to redirect him and to realign him, we need that as well. On February 12th, we're starting our groups. We're kicking off our next series of groups. And uh, we need group leaders. We need group leaders. I'm talking to someone today that God's like, you know what? He's stirring your soul right here. And you know that you're, you're supposed to lead a group. I don't know who you are, but God does. And this church needs more leaders. God's trusting you to step up and to answer the call and to help show someone that there's life in their letdown through your unique story, through, through your unique gifting. And so what I want to do is, is I think we're going to put a QR code up here. You can throw that up. If you want to sign up to be a group leader, you can just scan that with your phone right now, or you can, on your way out, we, uh, we have some white balloons, the tables with white balloons. Just look for the white balloons, and you can sign up to be a leader of a small group, and you can help represent Jesus to somebody else who is coming to this church and needs to find Jesus in a, in a, in a small environment. I, you only can learn so much in, 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 a, in a row, you learn a lot more in a circle, in someone's home. And, and, and that's what I want to encourage you, man, just to sign up. I don't know who you are, but answer the call, man. Answer the call. God's trusting you. Let me close with this. Ginger. Put her, put her picture up. That's Ginger. I met Ginger. Uh, well, I saw her before, but I, I actually talked with her December 
22nd. You know when that was? December 22nd? And she's here. She's here today. She's sitting in the front row. I talked to her. She, she works at the gym that I go to. And I, I, I spoke to her. Holy Spirit, on, it was December 22nd, the morning of our first Christmas in the, in the park. And, and I'm, I'm lifting weights and God says, she's over there vacuuming. And God says, go talk to her. And so I came up to you and I said, hey. And, you know, we had some small talk. And I said, you know, I just want to invite you to, to, uh, to, to this thing we're doing in the park, Christmas in the park. And she was in the midst of a letdown. You see, remember when you told me that you didn't have money to go. She lives, she lives, rents a room from her brother over, in, over by the mall. And she didn't have any money to go. She said, well, I'd like to go, I'd like to go but I don't have any money um, because I don't get paid till tomorrow. That, was, that would have been Friday. She was in the midst of a letdown, y'all. That's a letdown. And so I, I said, well, you know what? We'll have someone come pick you up. And sure enough, we had someone come pick you up from the gym later on. You came out there, and don't you know that when I gave that little invitation to accept Christ, guess whose little hand went up in the air? <laughs> and, and the cool thing is, I went into to the, the, the next day, your, your manager, I don't know if he told you, but... He said, you know, I, just, I don't know what y'all did for, for Ginger. She said, but she's been different. She comes in here with a smile, and she's happy. And, uh, and, and so I don't, he said, I don't know what y'all did, but whatever it is, thank you. He thanked me for, for what this church did, did for you. And, and, and the cool thing is, I guess who was here at 5.30 this morning with a vacuum in her hand? That's, that's from this morning. But it took a letdown. It took you, and her, her, she was literally sleeping in the closet at work because she couldn't go home. Why do we do Christmas in the park, Pastor John? Why do we have to cost so much money to... Thank God no one asked me that. You didn't. I just made that up. That's what I love about our church. Most churches, you get that. Not this church. I didn't have one person say, why are we spending so much money on, my, on people? That's why. That's why. In case you need to know. We took an offering called For the One. And, and I said, people, people are going to see a face. I feel like I saw your face. I feel like you were the one for me. You know, you were the one that I was praying for. And, and, and I don't know who it was for, for you. But like God is moving. God is working. But the crazy thing, as beautiful as crazy, it took a letdown. Sleeping in the closet at work? I'm not saying that's all on God. Maybe that was some decisions that were made, but God allowed it. He allowed the letdown for this beautiful but crazy intersection of two people. And now you haven't missed a Christmas in the park thereafter. You haven't missed a worship service. You, I have a feeling you ain't going to miss for a long time because I saw her a few days later and remember you started crying to me. You said, I just feel so good not to be alone. I know your dad, he, he walked out and you were young. I know you had a family member commit suicide. I, I know you were in that tragic accident where you lost your brother. You, you've had a life of letdowns, girl. But you know what? God's going to redeem every one of them. He's going to redeem everyone. And your best days, Ginger, they're ahead. They're ahead. Come on, girl. So uh, I don't know how we close, but we got to. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for investing in people. A church without a building would spend that much money. We should put it to the building. She is the building. You are the building. Amen. And we'll get a building someday, Lord willing, but just I pray we never forget it. I pray we never forget. I think this is why God's writing this unique story like this. A church that doesn't have a building ministering to 7,000 people. Where's your church at? Well, we, we use this, this building, but it's not ours. <laughs> uh, people are like, what? It's beautiful and it's crazy. Amen.
Ooh. Well, listen, would you bow your heads and close your eyes because I just want to pray over you. Anybody who's going through a letdown season, a letdown time, I just want to, I hope you feel the hope that only comes from Jesus. I hope you feel God's presence in this place. And Lord, I just thank you for each person that is in a letdown season, in the midst of their pain, in the midst of their sorrow, in the midst of all they're going through. I pray that they see you, they feel you, they hear you, and they know that you are working for their good. Holy Spirit, impart that to people who need to know it's going to be okay, that you haven't left them, that there is a plan through the chaos, and that there is a happy ending that's coming. You haven't forgotten about the people you love. You see them. You always saw Ginger, and you always see us. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for what you're doing with every head bowed, every eye closed. If you don't know Jesus, you want to know Jesus for the very first time, you want to make that decision to know him, maybe you're watching online or maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you can know him by simply praying a simple prayer to say, Jesus, I need you. I need your hope. I need what only you can bring. And so today I ask you into my heart to be my God, to be my king, and to let me know that it's going to be okay. You're in control. You're my king. My God, from this moment on, I exist for you. Thank you for your forgiveness, and thank you for what you did for me at the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's welcome them into the family of God. Come on. Yes. Woo. All right, well, listen. Listen, listen, listen. A quick reminder on the way out, if you haven't signed up, you want to be a group leader, God's bringing more gingers, right? And we need, we need group leaders to lead and to love. So sign up to be a group leader if God's leading you to do that. And if you need prayer, we've got our, our prayer team, our pastoral team. We'd love to pray with you. We're better together. But for the rest of you, let's go celebrating and looking for the letdown this week, realizing that there's life in that letdown. Amen? Amen.